Inshallah, those brothers who finish Salat, please come closer. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah. Inshallah, we're going to start. And as you can see, this is Quran, and that is science. There are many things common in the Quran and science. You should know about it, so you can be better Muslim, Inshallah. I have many books and many CDs. We have some display here. You can see it, and many presentation. As you can see that when it comes to Quran, we are uh, divided into different groups. We, we focus on different areas, like uh, some wants to be half as a Quran. Another group says that we like to recite like Ari Abdul Basit, it's so beautiful. And most of the non-Arabic speaking people, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Southeast Asia, Indonesia, Malaysia, we don't speak Arabic. So we read occasionally, Surah Yasin, Surah Class, for Barakat, for Kiyor. Other than that, we put in the shelf. And we have some Islamic scholars. They know very well about Quran, but they do not know science, so they cannot compare. On the other hand, if you look at geometry, navigation, philosophy, all these things are the discoveries of the Muslims. And today, most of the scientific discoveries are being made by people who are not Muslim. But the strange thing is, they are using our Quran. And that is the presentation here. That how is it that we read the same Quran? It is the non-Muslim. They find so many scientific mysteries. So we are going to share with you. Quran is a book of science. It has over 6,000 verses. More than, than 1,000 deal with science. We have some brothers or even the scholars. They say that I have nothing to do with science. I am happy with Quran. But Allah has placed 20% information verses in the Quran about science. So that is the reason, because this Quran is valid today, it is the final revelation, it will be valid tomorrow till the last day of this world. No matter how much scientific development we do, how much technological development we do, still Quran will be valid. That is one of the good reasons Allah SWT placed so many scientific information. And there are some scientists, they say that he has so many scientific information as there, yet to be discovered. This gentleman, he was a French medical doctor. He wrote that book. He used to live in Saudi Arabia. And he analyzed the whole Quran and he said there is no mistake in the Quran. This gentleman, he is a professor, Keith Moore, University of Toronto. He is still alive. His research area is embryology, how a child grows in the womb of his mother. Like we all grow up in our mother's home, how different parts of the body gradually forms. That is his research area. And you know what he's saying? He said, I found everything from Quran. How about that? He's not even a Muslim. And, in the, and he has written a book, it's called Developing Human. This book has been translated into eight language. This book is the textbook in medical school around the world. If you want to be a doctor, you have to know embryology. And in order to learn embryology, you have to read that book. That is the textbook. This gentleman, Professor Tejasen, he is in Chiang University, Thailand, Bangkok. He is the Dean of Medi Medical Science. His research area is pain receptors, how pain happens. As you know, on our skin there are pain receptors like this. There are hundreds of them around the body. That's why anywhere you, you get pain because the receptors send the signal on your brain. That's how you can feel pain. Now Allah SWT mentioned in Surah Nisa, verse number 56, as you can see, about the taste of punishment. Yazukul Azab, how Allah SWT is going to punish the people of the hellfire. How? Their skin will be removed and replaced with another layer of skin with more sensitive pain receptors. So the pain is more severe. Intensity will be more severe. That description in the Quran, so much impressed, 
that this gentleman, just one verse of, of the Quran was sufficient for him to accept the truth and become Muslim. We have been reading the same Quran for 1500 years. We couldn't figure out. He is a scientist. He knows exactly what Allah is saying. And that was enough for him. This is our astronomy. There are many, many references. We are going to go very quickly, inshallah. Allah mentioned about the day and night, how it happens, described in the Quran. Similarly, Allah SWT talks about the shape of the earth. These are the description in the Quran. This is the fault line. Moon has a fault line. It is all over the moon. As you know, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the early days of Makkah, the non-Muslim actually challenged him that if you are really the Prophet of Allah, show us some miracle. Show us that you can split the moon. And he did split the moon. So, so a lot of people ask this question, did NASA have any evidence? Did they, go, did they went over there a couple of times? Is there any evidence? Unfortunately, no. Because they only went few times, they did not dig anything, so they cannot find anything. That was not their mission anyway. But we have this proof. Allah SWT mentioned in the Quran that he did split the moon. That should be sufficient as a believer. And also when Prophet ﷺ pointed his finger, it is splitted like that and came down on the top of the two mountains in Saudi Arabia. And they stayed there for some time. And there is only one moon. People around the world definitely saw this thing. But in those days there was no communication. So people outside Makkah, like Medina, Taif, Tobuk, 300, 400, 500 miles away from Makkah. They actually saw this thing and when they traveled to Makkah later, because Makkah is the business center, everybody comes to Makkah to buy and sell. They gave witness. Yes, we saw this thing. It did happen. So it is not only mentioned in the Quran, but also historical fact. Eventually both pieces went back after a couple of hours and that is the moon we have today. This is the sun. It is very hot, as you know. It is burning gas. Massively. We cannot imagine how massively. And that is the flame. The flame is so deep, if you bring the earth, it will be inside the flame. Not only one earth, if you collect 45 earths, stack them vertically, all the 45 earths will be like tennis balls, will be inside the flame of the sun. The depth of the flame is 365,000 miles. Everything in this space is defined. They cannot go at random. They are defined. They have their path. Allah mentioned in Surah Yasin. Each of them has their own orbit and so on. There are many, many references. And this is our solar system. Each of the planet has their own path. And they are different. Allah put some samples. They are each different. We have the Earth. Next is the Mars. NASA has a mission to Mars. It has a lot of prospect. Within the next 50 to 100 years, there are a lot of people who will be living in Mars. It has a lot of opportunities. You want to see the opportunity, go to Silicon Valley and see how people are developing so many things. Same thing will happen over there. And uh, there are a lot of competition right now. Many countries want to go over there. So uh, this is our solar system. The light travels from the sun. It takes about three hours to cross our solar system. This is a very popular picture. Astronauts landed on the moon in 1969, Apollo 11. Many of you are not even born, right? So they look at the Earth standing on the moon. That's how the Earth looks like. So if we travel far away from the Earth, like four billion miles away from the Earth, where is the Earth? If you look at the center of the circle, that dot is the Earth. It is so small, you cannot even see yourself. You cannot even find ourselves where you live. That's what Allah described, is so vast space Allah has created. And these are asteroids. Most of them, they have a belt actually, most of the asteroids live there. But once in a while anyone comes down, it is pulled by the gravity and when it comes to the atmosphere, it is completely burned. That is one of the theories that the dinosaurs were killed by the asteroids. We can see their bones in the museum, right? But you cannot find them. So this asteroid actually survived. It hit Soviet Union. It is only a few inches, as you can see. Scientists estimate that if we explode 26 nuclear bombs, whatever energy it will generate, with that kind of energy, this piece entered into the atmosphere. And it went into the ground. It is still there. It's a little piece, about six inches. As you can see, the scale is showing. 
But if the piece is a little bigger, like 100 miles, survives and hit the earth, what will happen? This will happen. Let's see if we can get that video. See, this is a piece, 100 miles in diameter. It is showing very slow motion, but if it, it will come within a microsecond, less than a second. One second is very long. It will hit the Earth. Say it goes to Pacific Ocean, just to give you an idea. Pacific Ocean is deeper than the Mount Everest, seven miles. It will hit the Earth so hard, all the water of the Pacific Ocean will spill over. The whole Earth will be transformed into a ball of fire, and it will be burning for billions of years before it cools down. That's what happened to Mars. That's what scientists estimate. Mars has the similar condition like we have on the Earth. It is completely destroyed and it is cooled down now. We can go over there, live there. That is one of the reasons Mars is so important. As you can see, it can happen. Allah is saving us from those destructions. He's very powerful. We should not underestimate his powers. So we have to estimate how big is the universe. This is called one, light, one billion light years, how long it is. If you go around the Earth, you travel 25,000 miles maximum. You go from here to India and back, 25,000 miles, right? If the light goes around the Earth, it will travel eight times in one second, like that. It already traveled eight times. You went to Delhi and came back 16 times. How about that? It is very fast, right? Light travels in one second so many miles. It's for a minute, for an hour, for a day, for a month, and for a year. That is called one light year. So many miles it will travel in one year with that speed. Who can count those miles? Can you? How about easy one, this one? How about easiest one? When NASA find any object, they say it is so many billion light years away from the Earth, as you can see. The space is so vast. We have the sun and the Earth. Earth spins on its own axis 24 hours a day and night, and it goes around the, around the sun 365 days a year. And it's continuously happening. Similarly, the solar system goes around the Milky Way like this. That Milky Way you can see with our Hubble telescope. That is the Milky Way. We, we don't have technology to go close to it. It is so big. We can only see from a distance. We cannot even find our solar system. That dot is the solar system. It is so small. There are millions and billions of them. Okay, this is our seven heavens. Allah mentioned about it. There are seven of them. We are in the first heaven, or first sky, you can say. We don't know its size. How will you go out of the first one and find the second one? One night when the Prophet ﷺ was in Makkah, the non-Muslim, you know, Angel Jibrail came and said, Ya Rasulullah, Allah want to talk with you. He want to see you, show you. And they traveled. When they came to the boundary of the seventh heaven, it has a name in the Quran, that is the name. That is the station of Angel Jibrail. He cannot go beyond that. And Prophet ﷺ traveled alone. Allah showed him all the unknowns, what will happen in the Day of Judgment, what is, what is the consequences in the hellfire, what is the reward in the heaven. Everything was shown to him. And he was sent back to the earth. This is about physics. There are references of physics in the Quran. As you can see, this gentleman first predicted atomic theory. It has the neutrons, protons, electrons continuously moving. Modern science can split an atom. Allah knows everything what is even inside an atom, as you can see in this verse. This is our geology, geography. There is a water cycle. Water continuously transforms. If you look at it, from the rivers and ocean, it rises in the form of steam, cools down, forms cloud, and comes down. That is the water cycle. It is happening continuously. Allah mentioned about it 
in the Quran, 60 to 70 places about the rain. So think about it. Why Allah mentioned so many times? These scientists, they go in each verse where Allah mentioned about the rain and discover many new things. Like this is one verse. Allah mentioned about that how you crop, you have different crops of different colors, vegetation, taste. Each of them has a different taste, different color, different shapes. All these things Allah is reminding you. Even forget to give him thanks. And as you can see, uh, so many reasons Allah has mentioned about this vegetation. In the same way, geology, we have mountains, many places, there for a reason. They hold the earth's surface in their places. Autar, Annaba, verse number six and seven. They hold the earth's surface so they don't shake. And that is the reason. There are scientific research done. This gentleman, he was the scientific advisor to President Carter. He wrote a book of earth and he explained about the mountains using the Quranic verses. So everybody thought something new discovered. But actually it is in the Quran for the last 1500 years. We could not figure out. He was a scientist, he found out and put in his book and became a hero. How about that? And there are many places Allah mentioned about the mountains. This is another place. And not only that, now scientists say wherever you have mountains, we have as deep as up to nine times into the ground, holding the earth's surface. This is our oceanography. Uh, we have many places water is salt and some place water is sweet. Ar Rahman, 19 and 20, Allah mentioned about it and uh, many other places. They do not mix, as you can see. They run for hundreds of miles without joining together. This gentleman, William Hay, is the Dean of Marine Science. University of Colorado, Denver. He did research on those Quranic verses. He's the authority of these Quranic verses. He knows when they will mix, when they will not mix. He has published many technical papers and so on. It is the miracle of Allah. How water is, wall is running hundreds of miles, maintaining their wall and they are not joining together. Both are water, they are not joining. Why? That is the explanation he has. And like we, just to give an example, that is Mediterranean Sea and this is Atlantic Ocean. Water goes from one side to the other side through the st Strait of Gibraltar, that is called. And they will not mix. They will be running hundreds of miles in the Atlantic Ocean like this. If you can see the video. See? You can see hundreds of miles, they will not join together. In the same way, the water, if you go deep into the ocean, the, it forms layers of darkness. Darkness gradually increases. Allah mentioned in the Quran, Surah Nur, about it. Just to give an idea, when the light falls, it has seven colors, light has seven colors, as you can see. Each color goes up to a certain depth and it stops. Good example, red light goes up to 45 feet. After that, there's no red light. So if you go deep into the water, Pacific Ocean, or any other ocean, say 50 feet, and you have a cut, and you are bleeding red blood, but you will not be able to see red blood because there's no red light over there. That's what I'm trying to explain. Each light stops up to a certain depth. And after 3,000 feet, it is complete darkness. Even the fish cannot see itself. And there are a lot of things to discover. People actually send a robot, scientist. The robot went at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, deepest point on the earth, seven mile deep. And they found trees over there. They found fish over there. They found so many other things. This is about Biology, as you can see, Allah made everything, everything living with 80% water. We are living, we have 80% water in our system. That's why NASA, when they send any probe, mission is to find water. If there is water, there is possibility of living things over there. Like Mars has water. So, uh, as you can see, water is vital for the survival. 
Allah mentioned about it in so many places, as you can see. He's reminding us, and um, many places. There is a reason. Every place has a reason. Allah did not repeat for no reason. This is about botany. Everything made in pairs. As you can see. Whatever you see, they are made in pairs. So that's why you have genetic engineering. You can make a better product. Good example, Florida makes most of the oranges. 50, 60 years back, if the weather is very cold, suddenly they lose their crops. Frostbite, it is, it is damaged completely. Not anymore. Now they developed an orange which can survive in the cold weather. We have rice. I remember in Bangladesh, I used to eat bread because we could not afford rice. It was more, five times more expensive than rice, than, than, uh, than bread. Not anymore. We are growing more rice today. And uh, those are possibilities. We have designed, like well, there's a company called Monsanto. It designed a rice. It is big in size, like this. It can grow in desert. It can, it doesn't need any fertilizer. It doesn't need any insecticides to spray, to damage your weather or the environment. And as you know, India is one of the largest producer of rice. They want that seed. And Monsanto says, I'll give it to you. You have to pay the right price. You have to buy from me. It's not free. We, we spend billions of dollars to design it. But my point is, it's possible to make a better product because Allah put the information into the system. Pears. Let's to give an example. That is watermelon. Right? You have watermelon, different color, seedless, right? Uh, let's say $5, right? It's a good number. How about if you go to Japan, the same watermelon costs $200. Why? Because it is rectangular in shape, cubical. It is not round. Because if you have a round, you lose a lo lot of space in your refrigerator. So they make it more meat inside the same refrigerator. And they are willing to pay high price. These are possibilities. I'm showing you an example. Like in Texas, Texas A&M designed an onion. They call it IRS 1040. And like you file your income tax. Uh, it is so big, two pound, three pound in size. If you go to Pakistan and India right now, they are fighting because the price of onions is going up every day. They don't have an abundant supply. So Texas design is, is the rescue. So there are many things, possibilities, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the information, you can design it and make a better one. This is our geology. We have animals and birds. Allah says in the Quran, they live like in communities like us. They are not walking at random in the, in the jungles. They have communities. And there are many, many references. And this is about the bee. Bee is uh, very vital, very important. They work continuously. This gentleman, he's a French scientist. He was able to discover the, how the bees communicate with each other. 100,000 bees live in the same place. They work together. They build honey. They communicate and so on. And he got Nobel Prize. How about that? He used many Quranic verses to understand what Allah is saying about the bee, behavior of the bees. We read the same Quran. That's what I'm trying to remind all of us as a Muslim. This is our Quran. And it is, it is some, otherwise how those scientists will find those information? They cannot find in the Bible and Torah. This is old. They don't have scientific information. It is in the Quran. And uh, that's it. And there are many, many other things Allah mentioned about this B. Just to give an idea, they have groups, colonies, that's so on. Like good example, every colony has one queen. She is the biggest in size. What is her job? To lay eggs. How about 2,000 eggs per day? Continuously. How many in a minute? You can calculate. Right? You can see so many eggs she is laying. And there are workers, 10 to 50,000. Their, their job is to make holes for the eggs, clean, bring food, and clean up all these household works. And there are male, very few of them, 100 to 500. Their job is mate and die. The moment they mate, they have to die. They cannot live on the earth. That's why all the dead bees you can see on the ground are male bees. And they are working together to collect honey continuously. They're always busy. 
This is about the ants. They're also very hard working. They continuously work, continuously run. Scientists now estimate that they never sleep. How about that? We, we human, best of the creation, we have to sleep six to eight hours, right? Ants continuously work. They travel continuously. There are many references in the Quran. And they're very similar. In fact, scientists say the closest to human are the ants. Who wants to be the ants? Follow the ants. They bury their dead body like we do. They have a sophisticated system of division of labor, manager, supervisor, foreman, like we have in a plant. Very disciplined. And they have what they have. Many things. They, they meet once in a while and chat. How about that? They work very hard. I say, okay, let us have some good time. I tell our youngster, if you want to chat, come to the masjid. Don't go to the computer and chat with some strangers. You don't know who is the other person on the other side. We sometimes lose our children. This happens. So come to the masjid, such a beautiful masjid. Come to the masjid and chat with your friends, Muslim friends. And they have advanced method of communication among themselves. They exchange gifts. That was the habit of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whenever he used to receive any gift, he used to give it away to his companions. Every companion used to think that the Prophet loved me most. Can you do that? We divide. We Muslims are divided here. Every companion used to think that the Prophet loved me most. And not only that, some of the companions, they used to love him so much. After Isha, they used to go home to come for Salatul Fajr. They could not wait that Fajr. They used to come in the middle of the night and say, Ya Rasulullah, I want to see you right now. I cannot wait till Fajr. It is too long, too painful for me to wait. I want to see you right now. They love so much. We are so much divided today, Muslims' condition around the world. We talk about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How many of us follow him? It is not just say a few times salam and that should be... Put your action and show that you really care for Muslims. That should be your attitude. That is the message here. And they bury their dead body. I mean, the, the grains, if it is cold, weather, frost, they take care. This is about embryology. It's a very broad-based subject. A lot of things are discovered from Quran about embryology. I'm going to share with you some of them. This is the DNA. It is an acid. It is the egg. Everyone grow out of this egg. And... Uh, there are 100 trillion cells in a human body, as you can see, um, organized in chromosomes, pairs of chromosomes, 23 pairs. Those are the picture of the chromosomes, pairs. They're organized. And, and they have a lot of good reasons, DNA. Allah put all the genetic information about you into the DNA. Before you were born, in your mother's home, what will be the color of your eye? How much height you will have? How much sickness you will have? Uh, how many hair you will have, how many hair on the right eyebrow, how many on the left eyebrow, everything is defined in the DNA. Scientists estimate that it will take 200, uh, 450,000 pages to write down everything into the, DNA, into the DNA. So much information is there, like a big library. No two DNA can ever be same. They are different. And modern day criminal, criminal investigation can be traced using the DNA. These are standard by the police, FBI. If they find any crime scene, if they find anything, hair or anything, they can find that person's identity. Like recently, we have a, we have a package bombing, right? It was sent, they found the guy. They find from the fingerprints, he was using tape and so many things, so many ways, he can find that person's identity. It's very simple. And modern science can benefit also uh, so many ways this DNA can help you to diagnose and um, have a better cure. Somebody was convicted wrongfully like 25 years back. He could not prove himself. But now the DNA test showed that he was innocent. He was wrongfully convicted. These are the possibilities because you can identify and, and, and focus on that. As you can see, this is a Quranic verse. Professor Keith Moore, he was able to explain. You may know everything about Quran, but you will not be able to explain this verse because it is about science. 
there are three walls. Allah mentioned about it, three veils of darkness. Zulmatu Salasi. How it is protecting, how they are working, there are fluids in between. How they are, how, how they are protecting the fetus to grow, so it is not damaged from other, uh, they can only permeate through one way, those kind of things. And there are many, many other verses, as you can see. Allah fashioned you in due proportion. Every part of your body is different. Different size, right? Allah fashioned you. Every human being has roughly 200 body cells, as you can see, like that. Everyone grows from the information into the DNA and continuously grow. And uh, grow and grow and make your, make, your, make your piece together, like heart, lung, eye, everything is complete from those cells. So every part of your body is fully customized. You see, Allah is showing you, this is your heart development. How about that? It takes 40 days to build your heart. That is the first time the heart will be pumping and mother realizes there's something moving in, his, in her stomach. It takes 60 days to make your face. It has more body parts, eyes, ears. Allah take extra time to build your beautiful face. Have you ever looked at the mirror and thanked Allah? That oh Allah, you give me the best face on the earth? Have you even thought about it? You are so careful, you like your face so much, you look at the mirror again and again, but did you ever thank him? That oh Allah, you give me such a beautiful face? He's taking extra time to build your face. And this is eye development. This is blood circulatory development. And scientists estimate the total length of the blood vessels in your system from head to the toe, it is about 24,000 miles. Where the, your heart is pumping blood through each of the places, which is more than the circumference of the earth. Anywhere there is a clogging, there is a shortage, there is a slowdown of your blood, you are in the ICU. You're gone, your history. You have to survive with your machine. It is so complex. So many things we take it for granted. That's what I'm trying to make, make you explain. And there are some uh, pictures. This is very useful. I'm showing you because a lot of people know this. How do you decide it is a boy or a girl? There is a process. See, mother has all XX and father has 22 pairs XX, only one pair has X and Y. And if the combination is XX, it is a girl. If the combination is XY, it is a, it is a boy. Very simple. Many undeveloped countries, India, Africa, many remote areas, if a mother has two girls or three girls, everybody blame her, that she cannot have a son. It is not her fault, she is carrying. She is doing the hard work, nine months. It is the husband's responsibility to deliver why. If you cannot deliver why, don't expect a son. So we are abusing we, ignorance. Those kind of things happen in the society. Many family breaks up and all kinds of abuse takes place. Wrong information. In the, the Professor Keith Moore, he has researched many Quranic verses. He says everything is correct. He also said there are many verses in the Quran which he, can, which he cannot explain because those things are not discovered yet. And there are uh, uh, hearing. When a fetus grow in the mother's home, after 24th week he can hear. He can hear. After 28th week, after almost a month later, he can see. Until then, eyes remain closed. So Allah mentioned about it. You can see. First we hear, then we see. First we hear, then we see. First we hear, then we see. Scientists say, yes, that's how it works. We keep reading the same verse, we don't understand what Allah is saying. It is the scientists, they analyze every verse of the Quran and try to discover new things. So just to conclude, as you know, Allah SWT sent us in this world for a short time. We will have to leave very soon. The masjid will be intact, we will be gone, one at a time. After 100 years, none of, none of us will be here, right? So we should prepare ourselves. First of all, Allah created everything just by saying, kun fayakun, be and it came into existence. And when you see the universe, you should think about it. We sometimes give credit to so many scientific discoveries, but we fail to recognize who is the creator of those things. 
and he he has he knows everything he has 99 names he can see everything he can hear everything he knows our life and death right and then we cannot go outside his boundary right he controls everything every part of your body is working so beautifully if you want to go to this hospital and see how people are suffering for little little things heart is not working kidney is not working there is a stone here there is a clogging of the brain in the brain here the person is icu so many things we take it for granted we fail to recognize that so many we are merciful we are drowned in the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he is doing all these things for me what you should do we should first of all understand the quran that is my message it is not just for reading and counting rewards or for barakat that is fine but that is not the purpose allah sent the quran you have to understand the quran invest your children into the quran how about that people wants to invest to make his son or daughter to be a big doctor big scientist big things how about a good scholar islamic scholar is missing among us it is the non muslim they are showing us the discoveries we are on the sideline we can hear in the cnn what is happening how about our investment invest your children invest your future on quran that okay i want to dedicate my son he should be the best scholar he can explain everything about science from the quran that should be our approach and the goal is to obey allah and follow his messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and there is a shaitan in the middle he is working 24 hours how about that 24/7 when you are sleeping he is working he is not going to give up he is determined he take a oath from allah so we should be serious and as we muslim we believe that everything in this world is muqaddar everything is fixed how long you live how much you are going to earn all these things are fixed destined we believe in that we do our best but we believe in that but life here after everything is open there is no limit how bigger success you want how bigger paradise you want everything is open there is no limit forever how about that here 50 60 years 100 years over there forever so make your selection make your budget make your lifestyle make your package in such a way so that okay i have enough i am happy i don't want any more alhamdulillah let me focus on the life here after so i can get better deal from allah over there forever that should be our focus we are working in such a way it looks like we'll never leave this world we'll be here forever it's not going to happen we have to go so focus on the life here after so that we can be better off in the life here after that should be our focus there are many many references about it we should prepare ourselves and one of the thing we should do is how can i be more successful like you are trying to be more successful in this world how can i be more successful in the life here after one of the thing is spreading islam highest paid job we are looking for high tech job highest paid job this is the highest paid job spreading islam who can do that allah will give you highest reward this is a very important job especially living in this country we are living in the country of opportunity so many people are coming here everybody wants to come here for education high tech medical uh, technology degree good job good profession those kind of thing we alhamdulillah many of us has good life good profession may allah give barakat in your life but at the same time don't settle with these little things you have a greater opportunity to spread islam from this country many islamic activity you can do in this country you cannot even do in muslim country many muslim country they will not let you talk inside the masjid like you are doing here we have so much opportunity here we should not settle for little things and big miss the bigger things we should focus on how can i spread dawa if it spreads here it will go every part of the world every country is depending on this country for leadership for arms for technology for medical everything fashion you name anything this is the leader and you are here you are sitting on the gold mine golden opportunity you have no other country has so use your resources say okay i am here to spread islam to the every part of the world make your masjid like the masjid of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that masjid was very small very fragile 
but it has such a powerful light, it went to every part of the world. Can you make our mosques like that? It is not only for five times Salat. You can pray. As a Muslim, you can pray in the parking lot. You can pray anywhere. Mosques is to give dawah. This mosques should be organized so the Islam spreads to every neighborhood, every part of the world. That should be the focus. If you do that, Allah will give you best reward. And that should be our legacy. When you are living from this earth, what you are living? Couple of million dollars, couple of houses, right? Anybody can do that. But you have the greatest opportunity living in this country to spread Islam. Inshallah, we'll do that. Here are certain things I want to share with you to give dawah. Easy to difficult. Easy means email. Email is a very powerful tool. Send information to the people. People do not know. People are misinformed. They do not know about Allah. They do not know about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi He is supposed to be the Uswatun Hasana, best example. He is supposed to be the Kibale Rahmatulil Alamin. How come people don't know? They draw a cartoon about him. You can see how the damage is being done. Or you can say, enough is enough. I'm going to make a difference until my death. I'm not going to take it anymore. My lifestyle should change. I should be a different person. I was not responsible. I want to be responsible now, from now. I want to spread Islam to every part of the world. And that is the process, process you have. One is the email. I have a presentation. I want to share, give it to you. You can share. I present to churches, universities, anywhere I meet anybody. All from holy books. What are the things common between Judaism, Christianity, and Islam? People should be educated. They should know about They know everything bad about Islam. I want to teach them, show them what are the things common between religions so they can understand better. And if somebody is a good Christian, he can be a good Muslim. So those kind of connectivity we can show and spread every part of the world. Similarly, in the jail, we have thousands of Muslims in the jail. We have millions of dollars to build beautiful masjid. How about those people who are in the jail, they don't have even a Quran. How about that? I have a letter, one time I got a letter about 10 years back that changed my life. That brother, I get now hundreds of letters continuously. People know about me, I, I supply everywhere free. So that letter says that you have 20 Muslims in our jail and you have only one Quran. So what you do, we budget ourselves. Every hour, one brother. That day changed my thinking. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us such a rich country. If I, if I cannot send a $2 Quran to these brothers who, who wants to read, why I'm living here? What is the purpose of living here? Good life, good car, good house, good comfort? That, is, that should not be the reason. So you can also supply in the jail. Connect your masjid, connect that organization. There is an organization right here, Shriport. They call it IAM, Islamic American Incarcerated Muslims. I work with them. I send every month whatever I have. I have a list. I have a flyer. I can send it to you. You can find out those things. It is already in your home. You don't have to buy anything. It is already collecting dust in your home. Collect them and send them. Get rid of them. How about that? And send them. They'll be happy to use them. And there are a lot of opportunities in other places, hospital, university, and other places. Inshallah, we'll do that. Jazakallah khair. Just very quickly, I have a CD here. See, this is the CD I made. As you know, the reading is phasing out slowly. So I have this CD. It has those PowerPoint presentation in English, Arabic, Spanish, and French. You can get a copy in PowerPoint. And also I put some testimonials about some people who became Muslim. Why they became Muslim? They're very famous in this society. Like number one I put, Miss Czechoslovakia. She was Miss Universe. And she got a lot of name, fame, marketing, Hollywood, all kinds of things. But then also she became Muslim. Why? One minute. You can see her video. And also you can hear in the car, audio. So I put together some examples so that someone not a Muslim, he knows everything bad about Islam. When he sees these things, it might open his mind. It might make him interested about Islam. If you want to catch a fish, you have to put bait in the water. You may have the best knowledge, but if you don't do the right thing, you will not get the fish. Right? You can see, but you cannot catch. So this is like a tool, starter kit. Give it to somebody. I carry hundreds of them. You can do the same thing. You can get copies. 
we share with you information and give it away to anybody you meet anywhere. And it can make a difference. I already have distributed 10,000, this thing. I have a lot of good responses. You can do the same thing. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Wheel has been invented. You have to use it. Okay, inshallah, jazakallah khair. So I have some products here. So I request you that you can take a copy, but give us some donation, 20, 30, whatever you have. Or if you want to do extra, it is fine. Jazakallah khair. So please take one and... Uh, uh, is the same? No, they are different. Uh, give us some donation, maybe 20 or 40, whatever. What about these? So these are the...